Hi everyone, Susan Brown for Alkaline for Life and the Center for Better Bones. You know, for many decades I've been looking at bone health and I've been seeing thousands of people who are so distressed by their bone mineral density test, particularly thin women that come up with a low bone density and I always tell them, take that with a grain of salt because bone density is really affected by bone size and you really can't predict fracture by bone mineral density. I've written a lot on this. You can find it in my blogs, betterbones.com and Alkaline for Life. But also what we've noticed, people say, well then what does predict fracture? And I've always told you that total load, all the many different burdens you have. But out of all the research, the probably the most important, one of the most important things I see predicting fracture for the general population is muscle, muscle strength and muscle mass. And the reason I got inspired to talk about this today is because of a recent study in Asia that actually looked at this relationship of muscle mass and strength. And they found indeed, once again, that bone density was very related to muscle mass and the muscle performance really reflected in bone density. So it's muscle mass and muscle strength, what the muscles can do, really relates to bone density. And then, and actually physical performance. And many of the studies also talk about fracture risk being very related, one of the easiest ways to measure it or to suggest fracture risk is by muscle strength. And so, I want to just talk a little bit about this, the muscle bone link. With age, we lose both muscle and we lose bone. And in fact, we lose almost the same amount. The average person going from 35 to 85 will lose 45% of their muscle and about 50 or 45% of their bone. In fact, there's some interesting statistics that you lose 50% of your back muscle between the ages of 50 and 80, 50% of the back muscles. Now you might have noticed that yourself. That's why I'm always doing these exercises. I'm showing you these exercises. We need to strengthen our back muscles in order to strengthen the spine. That's about 2.5% a year from the age of 50 to 80. And they have found that simple back strengthening exercises, the one I've probably all showed you, lay down and lift up your chest like an airplane, child's airplane with a weight on your back, like the weighted vest or a backpack, they were able to stop this loss and actually, or reduce it really substantially. So what I've observed over the years, and now we have lots of research to support it, that muscle mass is a great predictor of fracture. Here's a study, reduced leg mass and lower grip strength in women is associated with osteoporosis and vertebral compression fractures. Vertebral fractures were related to grip strength. This is a little grip strength, a little, little meter. Actually, and it's an exercise tool you can take to strengthen the grips. And if you go to your physical therapist, they will pull out this little device. And this little device can actually measure grip strength. It's what they call a meter of grip strength. You just, they set it, you pull on it, and you can see how strong your grip is. That is a great predictor of likelihood of fracture. You might talk to your physical therapist about that. You might get a little device to practice some exercises. They also, another study, lean mass predicts fractures, and this was independent from, uh, from other factors, the frax factor. So lean muscle mass, another measure of indices that really successfully predicted fracture hip strength and was very related to bone mineral density. Again, we're always saying strengthen the muscles to strengthen the bone. This again, another study with grip strength showing that it was related to the development of osteoporosis. And if even if you have a lower bone density, building muscle will help a lot. Uh, muscle strength is one of the most important factors. And in fact, they found that this, this study talks about lower extremity, the lower body muscle performance is associated with lower hip bone density and a greater risk of hip fracture. It makes so much sense, doesn't it? That the muscles and bone work together. You need to have strong muscles to support the body. Many fractures are caused by falls, 
but also every time you use a muscle, you pull on that bone and you cause the bone to send a signal to grow stronger. Remember, it's the bending of bone that really sends this signal. It's a compression of bone that sends a signal to grow stronger. That's why we like hopping or jumping or even heel drops, even walking because it, it puts a load on the bone, causes a little bending of bone. The byline of all this is muscle mass and muscle strength is a very, very good predictor of both bone density and fracture risk. So every day I'm going to be sharing some ideas or nearly every day on how to build strength. We also have exercise evolution, great way to build strength. We have a weighted vest, we have a weighted belt. All these things help you to build muscle mass. You will rarely see a fracture amongst a person with good muscle mass, an osteoporotic, a low trauma fracture with good muscle mass. And certainly if you plan to live a long time, Keep your muscles in line. Keep your muscles strong. You'll have a better chance of keeping your bones strong. Okay, have a great day.